Hey everybody, Henry here from Mobcraft. Today we're going to go through the last couple steps of the brewing process, starting out with fermentation, moving into packaging, and then off to the world of distribution. In our last couple episodes, we've looked at mashing in, going through the boil, and now we're at the part where we add yeast into the beer to create alcohol. So first off, we start by pitching yeast into our cooled wort, and for the next seven to 10 days, that yeast is eating away at all the sugars inside the beer. Uh, the two byproducts of fermentation are both carbon dioxide and alcohol. So that's why you can see a bunch of bubbles coming out of these five gallon buckets. That's the fermentation going on. So here at Mobcraft we use a few different types of yeast. And yeast is the most important part of the whole brewing process. It's the little animal that creates the alcohol and you have to treat it right. Each one of our yeasts needs a different temperature to ferment at. So we have jacketed tanks that can regulate how warm or how cool the beer is fermenting. Depending on which style of beer we're brewing, the fermentation will go anywhere from four days up to three weeks. And once that fermentation process is done, we cool down the beer so we can harvest the yeast. It takes about 24 hours for the beer to go from 68 degrees down to about 34. And at that time, all the yeast that's in solution falls out into the bottom of the cones on the tank. Uh, we take that yeast that has fallen out of solution, put it into a yeast brink, and then we'll use that yeast again for our next batch. So as you know, Mobcraft beers usually have some pretty unique ingredients in them. We'll use raspberries, chocolate, sometimes even pineapple, and those have to get added to the beer somehow. Uh, we add all of our ingredients after fermentation, before the yeast gets evacuated out of the tank. We'll go and make a slurry out of whatever we're adding. So for instance, if we have 500 pounds of raspberries, we'll take a big blender on a stick, puree those raspberries up, bring them to about 160 degrees so they're sanitary, and then we'll put them right into the fermentation tank. With any of those adjuncts that we add that have sugar in them, the yeast will eat the sugar inside that, making sure that our uh, beer is fully attenuated before we send it over to the bright tank. Uh, the bright tank is where beer gets carbonated. Once the beer is carbonated, we have a really fun piece of equipment and it's called the Zaman Nagel. It's just a very fun thing to say. That's what we use to measure how much carbon dioxide is dissolved inside the liquid. Certain beers are a little bit more carbonated than others. Once we have it dialed in exactly how we want it, we'll send it over to the packaging line. So at Mobcraft, we package in three different ways. In kegs, cans, or bottles. Filling the kegs is pretty easy. We just hook a filler valve up and fill up kegs for a few hours. The canning line is a little bit more fun. Uh, we use a six head canning line and it fills about 30 cans per minute. The first step, the cans get offloaded from the pallet and they go through a twist rinser. Uh, then the cans come underneath the filler heads where they're first purged with carbon dioxide. And we do that because we want to push all the oxygen out of the can. Beer's worst enemies are light and oxygen, so we want to get all of the oxygen out of the cans that we can. Next, the lids will fly down on top of the cans and they'll go through the seamer, which actually folds the aluminum around itself and creates a tight seal. Uh, the cans get rinsed off real quick and then Josh packages them up in four packs and puts them in cases. The final way we package our beer is in bottles. We do both 22 ounce bottles for our crowdsourced beers and 500 milliliter bottles for all of our wild and sour beers. This goes through a process very similar to the cans where they get rinsed out with a sanitizer and then filled up with the liquid. However, our sour and wild beers are packaged in a pretty different way. We actually go through a third fermentation inside the bottle where we'll put a little bit of yeast and a little bit of sugar back inside with the flat beer and over about a month's period of time, fermentation will happen in the bottle, but because that carbon dioxide can't go anywhere, it embeds itself in the liquid, creating a different type of carbonation that we really like in all of our sour and wild beers. The last step in the process is the beer leaving our facility. Uh, we do this in a few different ways. One, through self-distribution, where we put the beer sometimes in the back of the Camry and drive it over to a bar, or we work with a few different distribution partners to get our beer out to retailers. We've got two distributors in Wisconsin and one in Michigan that help do just that. They distribute to about 900 different bars and liquor stores and restaurants around the state. If you want to find our beer, go to mobcraftbeer.com, click on the tab that says find our beer, and we got a nice map showing you all the locations you can pick up our stuff. Otherwise, you can always come down to the tap room in Walker's Point, 505 South 5th Street, and enjoy a pint straight out of the taps. Well, that's a wrap on the brewing process, so hopefully now you all know a little bit more about how beer is made. 
Now we're putting it in your hands. When you're going out to your favorite bar or liquor store or restaurant, ask them if they've got some beer made in Milwaukee or some beer made in Wisconsin because there's a lot of awesome breweries all in our community turning out some really great stuff.